Making Better Outdoor Videos, Part 1, The Importance of Storytelling. Hey, it's Evan. This winter, while I'm mostly stuck inside for various reasons, I think I'm going to do a few videos about videos, specifically about making outdoor videos and the importance of storytelling in outdoor videos. And this is going to be the first video in my series of three. In this first one, I'm just going to be setting the stage and I'll begin with a sad and upsetting comment I recently received on that one really long video I did about my Appalachian Trail through hike which was sort of a mashup of 41 shorter videos. That long video which you can find online on my channel now has almost 890,000 views. Thanks for that and thanks to Liz and to Luke and to Yelp and to all those many people who consented to be in my video. I really appreciate that and it made that video what it is. Those of you who have watched and reached out to me have made me sort of proud of the work I did in that particular video in a way that makes me look at it a little bit differently from my other videos. And if you haven't seen it, I'd like to get from 890,000 to a million views, so please take a look. But not all the reaction to my long AT video has been positive. Let's talk about the thumbs up and thumbs down. About 12,000 thumbs up so far, pretty good. And although I don't pay attention to thumbs down, I took a look just this once and my video, of which I claim to be so proud, has at last count 375 thumbs down. It's true. That's a lot of thumbs down. Also a record for me. Which just goes to show, like most YouTube videos that get a lot of views, it has attracted a lot of opinion in both directions. Which brings me to that sad and upsetting comment. Sort of a nasty comment really, also par, par for the course in YouTube land, but in this case also sort of a teaching moment. Unfortunately the comment doesn't seem to appear anymore, at least I couldn't find it yesterday in that sea of comments. Maybe its author deleted it, so I can't quote it 100% accurately, but I remember pretty much how it went. And the thing about it is, the teaching part, it nicely encapsulates a sort of tension that anyone who makes outdoor videos is familiar with one I want to talk about in this new series of videos of mine. Even if you just watch outdoor videos, as opposed to making them yourself, you'll be familiar with this tension I'm going to talk about. So, the comment. Went something like this, a dramatic reenactment. This is a horrible video. Why do egotists like you always think they have to put their faces in their videos and block out all the beautiful views and make the trail all about themselves? I came here to see the beauty of the Appalachian Trail and it's ruined because you're in love with yourself and your own face. Ah, another happy customer. But the point this person was making is an interesting one and it comes up all the time. It's a very common sort of comment that anyone who makes outdoor videos will recognize. It raises this question, what's more important in an outdoor backpacking video? The trail itself, views of nature, views of sunsets, views of mountains, or alternatively a story that can be told about the trail that features some views, sure, but also hopefully some kind of story and emotional charge. In truth, I really don't like to put myself in my face in my videos, but it's sort of the price of admission if you want to do something creative on YouTube like make a video about yourself backpacking. No matter how good your views are, if you want people to watch your video all the way to the end, you have to tell a story and if the story is about my backpacking trip, then that makes me the main character in the video, whether I like it or not. And I'm going to have to plaster my face all over the screen from time to time. So this three-part series, it's going to be about storytelling in outdoor videos and how I've been trying to do it, struggling to do it really, since I started making outdoor videos five or six years ago. Let me define storytelling a little better. It means constructing a video with a beginning, a middle, and an end. In the beginning, you introduce the main characters of the story, probably just yourself, and you lay out the goals and objectives. Then in the middle section, you show yourself facing and overcoming obstacles to those goals and objectives. Those obstacles that create a sense of forward momentum and which hopefully lead your viewers to ask, what will happen next? And therefore, keep watching all the way to the end. But still, you might ask, what's the problem with views alone? The problem is, beautiful views of nature without a story propelling the video along is boring. 
even your friends and family are going to find themselves yawning along the way. Views without story. That's pretty much the formula for the one million vi videos on YouTube of someone's new drone flying around in nature and capturing a sunset with nothing but some kind of upbeat musical soundtrack to make you feel even more inspired. Pretty, yes, but yawn. Would you rather read a true life memoir of a death defying battle to climb Mount Everest or just look at some pretty photographs of Mount Everest? You see what I mean. Another problem. When you make backpacking videos and elevate the importance of pretty views above the narrative, when you make a fetish of nature and its beauty and neglect the real story of what it took to achieve those views, you end up giving a distorted picture of what the trail you're walking on really is and really means. Anyone who watched my series of 41 videos about my through hike of the Appalachian Trail will recognize that as one of my themes. I sort of rebelled against the common idea that AT videos should be all about the views. I disagreed. I disagree now. I disagree with those types of videos in which the video maker constructs a false romantic fantasy about an Appalachian Trail that doesn't exist in real life, even when it is served up with an upbeat musical soundtrack to make you feel even more inspired. In truth, most of the AT isn't views and isn't beauty in that romantic sense of the word. There's also miles and miles of traffic noise and air pollution, poisonous snakes, dangerous thunderstorms, countless road crossings, and lots of road walks. But it's these things, though, which some like to overlook entirely, that make a through hike so momentous and unforgettable and turn it into a compelling story in a unique setting and make videos about the Appalachian Trail truthful and authentic, which is what, if you ask the average viewer, that's what they want in a YouTube backpacking video. Authenticity, real emotion, a story that has a trajectory and rises to some sort of climax that ends finally with an emotional payoff. The person who left that nasty comment might think he wanted nothing but views, but what most people actually want in outdoor videos are stories. Authentic, personal experiences about obstacles overcome and some positive or even negative change in the main characters and some emotional charge beyond just what you get from the beauty of the views. So the other two installments of this series. Next, in number two, I'm going to talk about how to tell a story in an outdoor video and its many challenges. How to adopt for yourself a sort of story lens that you can use to recognize the story of your hike as all that raw, unedited experience of hiking yourself is happening all around you. And then once you get a glimpse of the story you want to tell, with your editing and narration, how can you make it more interesting? So that will be video number two. And then in number three, I'll zoom in a little more and get a little more specific by taking a look not just at outdoor videos, but at a specific category of outdoor videos, that is through hiking videos. And I'll talk to those of you who are interested in my views about how to vlog your through hike which, not coincidentally, is the subject of an article I just did that's available right now at the Trek. So if you're about to leave on your thru-hike and want to skip ahead and read my five tips for better thru-hiking vlogs, head to the Trek online and read them there for yourself. I'll put a link in this video. Meanwhile, stay tuned. It might be a few weeks before my next installment. Thanks for watching this one.